Well, I invite Mr. Anthony Hobley. You're the CEO of Carbon Tracker Initiative. Can't wait to hear about that. <laughs> so thank you. Um, yes, the Carbon Tracker Initiative, we're ex-financial market professionals. One of the things that we do is we use investment grade financial analysis to look at the financial risks from climate change and the energy transition in the energy and financial markets. Now, you know, one of the things I want to get across here is fossil fuel projects, oil, gas, and coal, you know, the default is not that they are going to make you money. In fact, more and more of these projects are going to lose you money. And the financial markets, unfortunately, are not perfect. When I got in last night, a bit sort of wired, couldn't sleep, I watched that movie, The Big Short. And if you ever need evidence that humans can be incredibly stupid, even supposedly clever and well-educated humans, and they can deny what is in front of their faces, watch that movie and many of the key reasons behind the financial crash of 2008. So, especially when the world changes, humans quite often want to deny that change. The world is changing. We are in a technology-driven, low-carbon transition. And it is, it is clear, you just have to run the numbers, it is happening. Fossil fuels have lost their monopoly on energy generation, whether that's in transport or electricity generation or whatever it is. And that is only going to go in one direction. One of the other, I think, certainties of business history, and we've seen this again and again and again, is the incumbents almost always fail to survive these technological transitions. If that wasn't the case, the cars that you drive would probably almost certainly be manufactured by the people who used to manufacture steam locomotives. The camera in our smartphones would be manufactured by Kodak. In fact, the laptops number, a number of you are using would probably be manufactured by typewriter manufacturers like Olivetti, but that's not the case. So this is another constant of transitions. I said we're in a technology-driven transition, so it is no longer a case of if, but it is a case of when, and we all know that when is critically important if we're going to stay within the two degrees um, budget. The problem we have is many in the existing energy companies are wedded to a growth model, and why wouldn't they be? They've been successful for a century, generating growth and really good financial returns. But the world is changing, and the risk is if they continue in that growth mindset, they're going to pour billions, probably trillions, into projects that clearly don't make climate sense, but actually many of which do not make financial sense. They will create stranded assets. They will destroy shareholder value. If we just look at that in the context of the Arctic, we've done the analysis. We've looked at all the world's projects. There is $69 billion at risk in planned projects, in planned oil projects in the Arctic that don't make financial sense. There is $20 billion at risk in planned gas projects in the Arctic that do not make financial sense. Now, one of the key problems we have is the industry justifies much of this you know, growth, this investment, by demand models. But when you unpick those demand models, you find that they're based on a whole set of assumptions that give them the answer they want the highest possible assumptions for population growth, for GDP growth. Yet at the other end of the spectrum, some of the most pessimistic assumptions for the growth of new technologies like solar and wind, electric vehicles, energy story, storage. The reality as again, I have said, fossil fuels have lost their monopoly on energy generation, and that is critical. I think one of the key messages here is the development of Arctic oil and gas is likely in many cases probably not all, but in many cases, to be a bad financial investment. And that, I think, is a paradigm shift in the way that we think. Everyone's talked about the risk of new business from opening up the Arctic, but no one's really talking about the financial risks of doing that and the risks of destroying a huge amount of investment and value. This is why the report that's recently come out from the Financial Stability Board, FSB's Climate Risk Task Force, is critically important to ensure that we get the right information out to the financial markets in the right form. And one of the key things that we at Carbon Tracker have called for is that the business models of these companies and their investment plans are stress tested against objective scenarios for two degrees and for a low carbon transition. This, I think, will help us begin to understand those projects that we will need in the 30 year transition, but those projects that critically that we will not, particularly those in the Arctic. Just to finish, 
in the last 14, 13 seconds. We've also done some analysis on these companies that is counterintuitive, that actually, if they go X growth, if you put the world's major oil, gas, and coal companies on a two degrees low carbon pathway, they would be worth more. We estimate something like 140 billion more. For many of us who have pensions and investments tied up in these energy companies, that can only be good news. Thank you. Thank you very much.